Hello everyone, welcome back to another edition of Let's Talk Supercars. Of course, this is the Thrifty Bathurst 500 review. Uh, if you haven't checked the preview, uh, that will be on our YouTube as well as the V8 supports. Um, well, new season's here. Can't wait. I'm so happy that it's back. Uh, the only downside is we have to wait a whole month. And I'm also currently live on TikTok and Twitch, so for future reference, if you want to be part of it, um, be sure to check out socials, socials and be there. Now, normally I've got my co-host Alex with me. Unfortunately, he can't be here due to personal reasons, so uh, hopefully we see him back soon. But uh, it's just me tonight, so let's see how we go. So um, if you're on the chat here, if you want to ask any questions throughout tonight, you're more than welcome to, and I'll try my best to answer them. Um, and uh, yeah, without further ado, let's get cracking. So starting off with the season opener, obviously it, it didn't start very what am i trying to say it wasn't the greatest start to the year i must admit um for, yeah it was fantastic to have have supercars back um but of course it probably was a mid weekend in my opinion um don't know how everyone else here feels but personally i would give the event a 5 or 6 out of 10 it's just something like it was a bit of a snore fest for some of the, like there, of course there were some good moments but um, there were a, few, um, a bunch of Snorefest moments too, and we'll get into that as we go. But before we get into the supercar side of things, I want to cover just briefly the Dunlop series. Because if you, have, if you haven't seen it, I do advise to check out my V8 Supports, um, my, that podcast, which is also in, on YouTube. I uploaded that yesterday. I cover all the supports... Um, Except for the Dunlop series, because I like to have the Dunlops with the main games. So, um, yeah, let's get cracking. Uh, Rob, love using Bathurst as much as we can. I any, any good excuse to go to Bathurst is a good excuse. Arthur, how you going, buddy? Uh, the pile-up at the cutting was... Oh, that was... That is Forza Lobby stuff. That's what that was. That was intense. Like, it... <laughs> It just shows because um, it was just really messy. And uh, so let's get into that. Um, nice little transition here. Uh, so race one for the Dunlop series technically didn't really happen. Although um, the race officials declared it as a race and actually gave points, which in my opinion was super silly given how there was pretty much no green flag running. Um, what have I got here? I've got three cars, um, roughly that stalled off the line. I think one had an actual problem, which couldn't get off the line. So the first safety car was deployed. Um, and one, once the restart got underway, it was still chaos. Like Cooper Murray, uh, man, what a weekend he had. Um, he found, he hit the wall at the grate multiple times, uh, on both days. And he had a shocking weekend. He did get pole position, which was good, but, um, yeah, no, he, other than that, he had an awful weekend. Uh, Bryce Super 2 was better in the main game, was better than the main game. Yeah, I agree in this instance, I agree. Um, Rob, what can we do to prevent the safety cars in Dunlop series? Great. It is a fantastic series. Um, it's, I don't, I really don't know because um, I did like the introduction of the virtual safety car. Um, I feel like maybe, oh, see, it's tricky because that car, you know, they had to put the safety car out to get rid of that car at the starting line. Um, but the thing is, maybe we could have red, I don't, I don't know, maybe they could have red flagged it even, even if it was just a brief moment or let them, actually, you know what? No, oh, no, but the race start, I was going to say maybe they could have done another formation lap. Like for this, I'm, I'm talking about the lap one incident, um, but uh, you know it's it's a bit messy. Yeah, it's a bit weird having the virtual safety car. Um, we only saw it once, I think, this weekend. Um, it it is a bit weird, I must admit, because um, <laughs> I'm only purely used to it to Formula One as well, um, as well as endurance. So, but yeah, but. Anyway, so Kai Allen actually was technically the official winner for that one, um, considering nothing was happening. But yeah, no, it was insane. I think, I think what happened was Cameron Crick actually spun uh, Zane Morse 
at the cutting. And uh, that actually that ended up causing a pile up. And you could see the jet, jo uh, you could see Jet Johnson on uh, on board. Um, he was pretty animated after that. And there was no way, no way he could go. Unfortunately, um, it's such a tight part of the circuit. So no, nah, it's unfortunate. Rob Cooper Murray went from high of the highs to the lows of the lows. He sure did. I. And I think the stab in the chest was the fact that everyone got points on Saturday, <laughs> um, which didn't help his case either. But no, nah, he had a shocking weekend. Um, and hopefully he does better because, of course, he's going to be racing uh, with Craig Lowndes uh, when he goes back to Bathurst as the wild card in that super cheap auto wild card entry for Triple Eight. Um, so. Let's have a look at the top three of the Super 2 category. We've got Kai Allen winning. Um, Cameron is in second, and then uh, good old Bates in third. Um, so even though it wasn't a race, they still got points. And race two, we actually did get some green running. Uh, thank God for that. Uh, although Zane Moore stalled off the line, unfortunately. And thanks for the shares, uh, Thick Jimothy. Appreciate it. Yeah, Rob, I agree. <laughs> Bathurst pretty much doesn't count for him at all. It's like Shane Van Gisbergen last year at Adelaide. Um, but, uh, yeah, so what happened to Zane Morse, by the way, too, um, is when he um, stalled off the line, he actually received a penalty for that. Now, it wasn't for the stall itself. It was because he wasn't in the correct positioning of his um, starting grid box, um, which is unfortunate for Morse, but uh, I guess, you know, that's fair enough, but... Um, so a weekend to forget, to forget for Zane Morse. Uh, and Cooper Murray, as I said, another forgetful weekend for him, unfortunately. And also another one who found the wall one Sunday was uh, Matt Charter after heading, uh, I think he locked up heading into Forest Elbow. And unfortunately, that right front looked a bit uh, secondhand and a bit bent. So that's unfortunate for him. And speaking of Matt Charter, um, I'm excited to see what they do this year because they're looking at, I think, maybe three wildcard entries this year. Um, I believe they're planning on obviously doing Sandown and Bathurst, so similar to what they did in 21 um, with the Young Stars thing. Um, but they're also planning, I think Charter's going to be doing a solo wildcard at Darwin. So that'll be very cool to see. I'm excited for that. Uh, he's a great bloke. Um, so let's have a look at the top three for Super 2. We've got Kai Allen, Job Stewart getting his first podium for Super 2. Uh, he did really well this weekend. Um, unfortunately, he stalled off the line in race one, but to get on the front row is really cool. And I've got to say, um, his Erebus Academy car looks like a looks looks a ton better than uh, the supercar one. It just looks so much nicer. Rob, need to see more Super 2 rounds given how much the season... Oh, it's... See, that's the thing. I'm, I'm glad you made that point because obviously they only get six rounds. Um, it's literally half of supercars, which even supercars should even get more as well. Uh, six, like, they have to wait till May for round two. That's how long you have to wait, which is a load of crap, in my opinion, unfortunately. Like, I feel like they should be going to pretty much almost all the supercar races, if not all of them. Like, maybe nine of them. You know, instead of six, just six is not enough. Um, and like you said about the money, it's just way too expensive. That's why um, I think the V8 Touring Car Series actually went under. Like, because not not enough people actually could afford to enter. And that's why F, uh, S5000s are sidelined at the moment, because um, they cost a, a shit ton and uh, basically you can't go anywhere with them, unfortunately. Eddie, uh, yeah, my, I'll add it, mate. If you chuck it down, if you send me a text on uh, TikTok, I'll be able to add it for you. I believe, yeah, that was the Kumo series, Rob. So what they did was um, Kumo series became Gen uh, Super 3. Um, and then once, um, I believe, I could be wrong, once um, Super 3 received VF Commodores and FGXs and Nissans, uh, the FGs and VE Commodores, um, they went back to V8 Touring Cars, but not enough people, I think, was in that category. Now, I could be wrong. They could still be doing it, but as far, as, far as I'm aware, um, they're not. But uh, let's have a look at everything here. Um, oh, Eddie, I just said um, 
just send me your iRacing name on a uh, TikTok message. Um, or I'll comma, comment it on my recent one just so I can have access to it later on. Um, let's have a look at some questions. Jordan, how you going, mates? Yeah, I agree. Supercars is a bit downhill at the moment. Um, yeah, I agree, Sean. Super 2 should be getting something along the lines of F2. Um, yeah, they need to be at more events. Like, they need to be with the supercars. How are they supposed to learn? Like, the two months... Two months... Wait, no, hang on. That's actually three months. Is it? No, I'm having a... Two month wait um, between next round. Nathan, I love the Porsche series, mate. Porsche is always my fave. Jabby, go the balls. Nice man. You would have enjoyed last weekend, that's for sure. Bro, uh, Daniel, how you going, mate? Nice name. Um, Brody, where you at? No idea. No idea. Last time I saw him, he was picking up an award and petting Will Brown's cat. Other than that, he's doing all right. Um, so, yeah, with that, with the Super 2 stuff, um, out of the way, let's get into the main chit-chat of the day. Uh, the Thrifty Bathurst 500. So, Supercars are back. First off, I'm happy. I'm glad they're back. Um, it's, I've missed the sound of the V8s. Um, will SVG win Xfinity? Gotta say, I, um, there's a chance. Like, he, he's already got a third, uh, and he's only round two. So I reckon he can be definitely be up there. I'm not sure about winning the whole series, but he's going to be up there for sure, and I'm very excited to see how he goes. Um, so supercars, uh, great, great, great to see them back. Um, I've missed it. Now the only downside is we have to wait a whole month, which is awesome, I guess. <laughs> no, I'm kidding, it's not. Um, but uh, so what? how I'm going to do this here, um, oh, before actually I do that, uh, there's a few topics I want to talk about regarding supercars before we get through the grid um, reviews and stuff. Jimmy, thanks for the follow, mate. Appreciate it. Uh, also, if you want a better viewing experience, if you're watching this live, I recommend checking out Twitch as well for a, a landscape viewing. Uh, especially after this, we'll be uh, doing a V8 Supercars 3 Let's Play. So if you stick around for that, um, be sure to, to check that out as well. Thanks for the follow, and uh, Angie. Appreciate it. Um, so... Yeah, is overall mid weekend, um, five out of ten. I'm going to put it five point five, because um, there were some good moments in the race, um, and some good stories ca that came from the weekend. But unfortunately, um, it was a bit boring here and there. Um, parody. Um, now it was. It's a bit too early to tell, um, given it was Bathurst. Um, I think we'll we'll see. We'll get a better view at it um, in Albert Park. Um, but I think maybe we're on the right track here. Um, obviously, yes, Camaro won the weekend, but Chaz was really quick in that Mustang all weekend. Actually, that WIU car was really good all weekend, and uh, I, I reckon we're on a step towards the right direction with parity-wise. Um, again, it's very hard to talk about it just because um, round one was Bathurst, so... Um, and you know, you know what Bathurst can be like, so we won't probably know till Albert Park. Um, hopefully we'll be able to find out later. Needs to be a 600, more racing, less fuel. Yeah, I, I agree, mate. I agree. Uh, Rob, the way Larko explained it was fantastic. He's, yeah, oh, mate, every time Larko talks, it just, it's beautiful. As I was saying, on v when I was playing V8s last night, um, the guy that talks, the Scottish dude, it's like Mark Larkin and Neil Crompton had a baby. But no, I'm, I'm very uh, positively minded about this. So I'm hoping, I'm looking forward to seeing Albert Park and seeing uh, a better understanding for it, if that makes sense. Uh, yeah, oh, Rob, Matt Stone Racing, they were fantastic this weekend. And I will get into them um, very, very shortly, but and I'm looking forward to it too. Um, Angie, like I explained everything so well, he does, mate, he does. Um, so yeah, it hard, also hard tires. Um, that was a very good choice. I'm, I'm glad they did that instead of the horrible softs. Um, yes, the racing was a bit boring, but at least we actually got some racing. If we, uh, if they had softs, then we probably wouldn't have seen any racing at all. So, um, I'm glad that they did that. And... From the sounds of it, it sounds like supercars are actually confident um, 
in using hard tyres for the 1000. Now, I said this last night, um, yeah, uh, V8 dude, yeah, I'm, I'm playing um, V8 Supercars 3 after this, so if you stick around probably for another hour or so, I'll, I'll, I'll be playing that for sure. Angie Super 2, yeah, I know, I know, mate. <laughs> um, Matt, yeah, I agree. The hards will be fantastic for the 1000, but I, I, what I would love more than anything is if they introduce dynamic tyres. So like Formula 1, where you, they have to have a stint of softs or something, um, where they use both compounds. It just creates more of a um, strategy mix-up, and I, I'd love to see that. Um, so hopefully that we see... Uh, we've got until October for them to make a decision. But definitely um, hard, if they have to do anything at all, then hard ties is the way to go for sure. Um, and uh, so now let's get into the teams. Um, so what I'll be doing, this is how I'll be sorting these out. This is what I did last year, is I go through the top of the current team standings um, and work my way down to the bottom and explain how each team went throughout the weekend. And this is based off the current team's championship, which is also the way the pit lane's going to be uh, in Melbourne. So let's, without further ado, let's get cracking. Um, yeah, I agree, Daniel. I agree. Uh, so starting off with the, the one to beat after this weekend, which I thought was going to be the case anyway, uh, Red Bull Ampol Racing, they lead the way with 567 points, and they actually will be... Leading the field um, at pit lane for the next round, which is funny because um, supercars won't be in the pit lane in Albert Park. So curious to see how that goes. But they'll be first out to qualifying, at least. So um, it was a perfect weekend for them. Um, I'm personally happy because I do want to see Feeney and Brown do well this year. Um, I do quite like them. They're quite good. Uh, Feeney did end up getting a five-second penalty, though, for Sunday um, for, uh, I think, clipping uh, James Golding off at the chase. Um, I'll get into that in a minute, Matt. I'll get into that. Um, and But but if it wasn't for that... Uh, so basically what happened, if you didn't watch it, um, Brock Feeney pushed... Uh, it was an accident sort of thing. He, he ran James Golding wide. Uh, he actually almost tried to readdress, but unfortunately he wasn't able to. Um, so instead he got the five second penalty. Um, and if it wasn't for that, I reckon they would have gotten a one, two because, um, for reasons which I'll get into soon. Uh, in, now in terms of, yeah, 13 viewers, hell yeah, let's go guys. If you, if you want, if you enjoy this, be sure to ch like and follow and subscribe and all that stuff, share it to the world and all your stuff, it, it, to share it to the people who love supercars. If they want to, um, check this out, you don't have to, I'll just recommendation richo thanks for the follow appreciate it um yeah so the the situation with feeney at the moment apparently if you don't know uh because it is fairly recent um he there's only been one or two articles regarding him uh now so a little bit of context um so basically armor all is no longer sponsoring the poll award now it is boost and so, obviously, when you get the pole award, you usually put the hat on and, the, you know, get take a photo with the giant board. Now, Brock Feeney didn't wear the boost hat. Um, inst instead, he wore his Red Bull hat. Um, and uh, now, that's it. Yeah, exactly. And uh, the reason, uh, from what I understand, is... It's nothing to do with Red Bull or supercars. It's more to do with Feeney and his personal sponsors. So Boost originally sponsored him before he went to uh, Red Bull Ampol Racing in the main game. Um, and when he went there, he ended up getting Vodafone as a sponsor instead. Um, now, that is, the reason you know he didn't wear the Boost hat is probably he didn't want to... He probably had an issue with... I don't know. There's probably some confrontation between um, uh, Vodafone and him if he was to wear that. Um, yeah, no, see, that's what I mean. I'm not overly fussed about it. Um, it's just a hat uh, at the end of the day. Um, and we all know what Peter Adderton can be like sometimes as well. Because um, he was pretty animated about it on social media, like he always is. Um, but... 
Yeah, it, it's just all. All it is is just because he is sponsored by Vodafone, which is a competitive uh, mobile company uh, for Boost. So it's a conflict of sponsorship, like uh, Rob and Matt have been saying here. Um, so it is fair enough. Uh, so there's not much I'm going to say about that. Um, it's understandable, but I didn't even know anything about it until Monday. And I, to be honest, I didn't really care much for it. <laughs> it's just a hat at the end of the day. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, right. Yeah, so it's just... Maybe we will see how the year goes, but um, yeah, it's just a little pickle on the side of the road. That's all. <laughs> I've never said that before, and I'll probably never say it again, but that's exactly what it was. Um, but speaking of them, before we get into the next one, um, got to say, Red Bull, good pairing, good pairing choices. I'm excited what the year brings for them. I reckon um, we could potentially, I wonder if we could see a Hamilton versus Rosberg, maybe not this year. But maybe next year um, we could see something like that um, create a spectacle for the sport. Um, but no, they got a good, very good pairing. They're going to be hard to beat this year for sure. They wanted their hat to say, like that's easy to do. Just do that. Um, yeah, I guess I guess Red Triple uh, Eight were trying to work just to please everyone. I guess, and which is fair enough. Like it's. Like I said, it's nothing severe or anything. It's just um, Peter Adden wasn't too happy about it. Yes, Rob, I'll get that in just a minute. So be ready for that. But I'm fan I'm excited to talk about Reynolds because, man, what a weekend he had. I'm very, very happy. Um, so let's get into his old team, uh, Grove Racing or Penwright Racing. They're second in the championship at the moment, which also means... They're, you know, they're literally where the Red Bull was this weekend in terms of pit bay orders. Like, they've never been up there before, and I'm very stoked to see them up there. I'm really happy for them, and they've currently got 367 points. Um, oh, also, I forgot to say, Brock Feeney finished first and third, and uh, Will Brown finished second and first. I, f I forgot to read the results for that, because um, I've got the results here. I've just, I got too carried away with... Um, Brock Feeney's hat. Uh, anyway, so yeah, Pre Night Racing, they were fast this weekend, um, as expected. Uh, they had a fantastic uh, back end of last year, and uh, good to see Richie Stanaway um, having some good pace. Now, Matt, he actually out, uh, out, uh, right, out finished, I guess you could call it, um, Matt Payne in race one. So Richie Stanaway got fourth, while Matt Payne got tenth. And then on Sunday, Stanaway got 11th and Matt Payne got 7th. So they were, they were pretty good. Now, of course, um, Richie Stanaway did make a couple mistakes, uh, I think, in qualifying or practice. Drew, how you going, buddy? I'm doing all right. How are you, man? Um, so I just... I'm a bit phlegmy tonight. Sorry. That's why I was muting myself. Um... Oh yeah, unfortunate for Ryan Wood. Yeah, it's um, yeah, I'll get into that. But he he, it's not over. He's got a bright future, I believe. He's got a very bright future. Um, so yeah, back to Penright. Back to the other young blokes. Uh, yeah, Richie Stanaway did very well. Matt Payne did well. Uh, I think they made the shootout as well, which is really good. Uh, a lot of good, lot of teams actually made it into the shootout this weekend that I'm going to be talking about, which I'm very happy for. Um. And very excited. But, uh, yeah, and that's pretty much all I've got to say for Penrite. I'm excited to see what they do uh, in Melbourne, uh, being the second team to leave pit lane uh, for the qualifying session. So that'll be cool. And ho and they'll be looking to stay there for um, the next one. Uh, here's a good one. Third place, uh, Matt Stone Racing with 3-3-3 three, three, three points. Uh, so Nick Perkat finished sixth. With Cameron Hill in fifth, and then uh, for Sunday it's a respectively a ninth and twenty third. They had a fantastic weekend. That car looks so quick, and Nick looks very happy to be there. Now, um, similar thing to Reynolds, I guess it's the difference between the Camaro and the Mustang. Um, they just look more comfortable there, in my opinion. Like made it into the shootout. 
Um, I did have written here that it's the most, it's the second most consistent team besides from Red Bull, um, which, which is why they're up there. Um, now, unfortunately for Cameron Hill, though, he unfortunately finished 23rd uh, due to some drama on lap one with Ryan Wood, and I can't remember who else. Um, but that's un- he unfortunately got damaged from that and ruined his day. He still finished, but unfortunately ruined his day. But over besides from that, they had a fantastic weekend, and I'm very excited to see what they do in out in uh, Melbourne. Uh, and per yeah, I agree. Per see, he just seems happier there, and when he's happier, he can drive better. Um, I just uh, answer these questions here before we get too carried away here. Yeah, Rob, good to see Richie having another chance. Yeah, I agree, mate. And he seems so much better minded as well. Uh, he's going to have a good year, I reckon. He's at, it's good to see him in a good car too. Uh, of course, GRM when he joined, he was um, well, of course with Tickford at the time too. Uh, they were struggling massively when he joined. Riley, hey, doing, mate? What do you think about race two at Bathurst? Considering most top ten race there a week prior, I enjoyed it. I, I actually quite like race two more than race one. Um, personally, the Bathurst twelve hour was better um, by all means, but uh, no, I enjoyed it a lot of. Dr- a lot of those drivers were quick and actually showed, um, uh, especially Chaz as well and the Triple Eight boys. Uh, they did very well and they did put on a show for a while um, as well, which is cool. And Cam Hill, Rob, yeah, I agree. And Matt, yeah, Cam Hill, uh, was he's he's really good. Plus, his car looks brilliant. Uh, it looks very similar to Shane Van Gisbergen's uh, SB Tools livery back in the day. Um, no, I'm excited. This, this is their best year, I reckon. This best chance to have a good result. Um, of course, they won last year, and I reckon we might see a potential win from them there. From here, uh, there. I reckon, I'm just going to say it now, they might win a race this year, and I'm excited for it. Simon, how you going, mate? Will Brown is doing good. He is, sure is. He's actually leading the championship, too, so he'll be starting practice fine in Melbourne with the good old orange stickers. Nah, the fourth car in Tickford was never great. That's why I'm glad they got rid of the other two. Thank God for that. Riley, I love the 12-hour because uh, you're a local. Oh, nice, man. Did you did you end up going to the track uh, for the 12-hour? Uh, the 12-hour definitely would have helped them for the 500 for sure. Um, you know, any time you can get on Bathurst to, to work, like, to learn... And to get practice and, you know, get back into the groove of things um, is a good thing. Rob, have to remember that Cam Hill won the Career Cup four years ago. Yeah, exactly. Like, um, he's definitely a good good driver. He's de- he's there for a reason. Um, Triple Eight wouldn't have had him in uh, with Craig Lowndes. Uh, did he have him with Craig Lowndes or am I going crazy? I think I'm going crazy. No, he, he, with, he was with... Uh, I don't know. He was with Triple Eight... Um, for Super 2, that's what I'm trying to say. Um, no, I'm excited. Yeah, that was Fraser. Yeah, yeah I'm getting mixed up with Feeney and, F- <laughs> and Fraser and then Goddard. That's right, yeah. Um, I forgot because uh, Fraser and Hill were teammates in Super 2. Thanks for that, Nathan. Appreciate it. <laughs> uh, Daniel Erebus just got rid of their number one driver. Yeah, that, yeah that's a good, that's a, that's a good uh, Red Bull tactic there. Um, and, uh, yeah, speaking of... Uh, well, not speaking of them because... They're actually quite low um, on the leaderboard this time around. But before we get into the next... Uh, nice, man. Nice, Riley. Did you survive the weather, though? Uh, I never got a chance to go up. I hope, hope, I'm hope i hoping maybe I can go to the 1,000 this year, see how we go. But uh, nah, definitely one day I'll definitely go there. Uh, throw out question, Daniel. Will Matt Campbell come back to a drive? Oh... See, I don't know because he's having a really fantastic time with uh, Porsche at the moment. Uh, maybe for a, a co-drive if he gets asked and his schedule is okay. But in terms of him coming back, I doubt it because um, he's been he's he's having so much success um, with Porsche at the moment. He won Daytona, he won Port- Bathurst. Uh, he's having a great year. Riley, also, do we know anything about the Kostecki drama? Uh, no, it's actually gone quite quiet for now, finally. Um, Erebus did have a interview. So Betty and um, Barry had an interview um, with Jess Yates this weekend, and they pretty much said nothing. Um, now, 
I'll say my uh, opinion based off that now while we're in topic. Betty, so Betty, um, if you didn't read the interview or didn't see the interview, sorry, Betty said that uh, he, she can't say anything uh, purely for the privacy of Brody Kostecki, which is fair enough. Um, Barry Ryan didn't say much either. They were just talking about social hate and stuff like that, which, by the way, um, what am I about to say before I say that? Uh, I don't condone any social hate whatsoever. No one should have to deal with death threats or anything like that. You know, that's sick, you know. But um, Barry Ryan did put on a sob story here. Um, now, I don't want to sound like an asshole, but I, Barry, he's got a reputation, and I personally have lost a lot of... I don't really have a lot of trust for him um, after everything. So, yeah, maybe he uh, had a, had some trouble with like that. But it's kind of hard to trust him after what's happened so f like, like, lately with Brody. Um, but in saying that, though, no one should be going through dealing with any social hate or anything like that. That's awful. But basically, no news on Brody Kostecki. And apparently Brody declined anything from, from Supercars uh, when they asked if they could speak to him. And he politely declined, which is... So maybe one day we'll, we'll uh, hear some more. But I'm glad it's sort of gone quiet now. Um, it's probably good for everyone's mental health. Uh, Shag, how you going, buddy? I'm doing good, man. How are you? You're just in time for the Thrifty Bathurst 500 review. Next up, we've got, um, Team 18 in fourth position with 324 points. They had a really good weekend too. They've got a good car like Matt Stone Racing. I'm excited to see what they do this year. And similar to Nick, Dave looks so happier, so much happier, uh, in that car than he did last year. Um, again, it's the Mustang Camaro difference in my opinion. Uh, and I'm very happy because Dave, uh, is a great bloke and Mark Winterbottom did all right as well. So he, although not as well as he would hope, uh, so David Reynolds finished eighth and sixth and Mark Winterbottom finished 12th and 14th. So in saying that an average weekend for Mark Winterbottom compared to how good, uh, Dave was in that car. Um, so they'll be probably do some homework and compare notes in time for Albert Park. But Dave looked so much happier um, in that car than Frosty did this weekend. Uh, he even made the shootout. Now, unfortunate for Dave, on Saturday, uh, just before he was about to go out on the shootout, um, he unfortunately got a puncture, a left front, a left rear, a right rear puncture, sorry, I think. Thanks for the follow, Sax. Appreciate it. Um, you're in the Shell Racing team? Hell yeah, man. Let's go. Um, yeah, I feel for Dave because he unfortunately missed out on a shootout because of a puncture. Um, but that's okay. He managed to finish well anyway. And he, that car's got pace. So it's only round one. Uh, Sh Sean, thanks for the follow, mate. Uh, so I'm very excited to see what they do um, in the next rounds. But... No, he, he, he looked happy. He looks happy, and I'm glad for that. Plus, the car looks really good. Their liveries are probably one of my favourites for the year, I reckon. Riley, what do you think supercars could do to improve lap times at Bathurst or sub-201s? Um, swap them out for GT cars. <laughs> um, that's te If you want a quicker lap time, that's what's got to happen. Um, but personally, you know, I don't, I don't... I'm just kidding, by the way. I don't actually want them to race GT cars. Um, but if you want a good lap time, that's what they do. Because obviously, the reason they were slower this year is because they had the hard tyres all weekend. Of course, we saw the soft tyres last time. So it's a big difference. Um, but uh, sometimes you got to sacrifice lap time speed for a good racing. Um, so I'm okay with that. Jimmy, hey, uh, well, the Camaro is, quicker, is a quicker car by engine size alone. Not really far, fair right of the right out here. Yeah, no, you're right, mate. I butchered that, but... <laughs> so sorry, but you're right. Um, so, curious to see what the year brings for parody wise Hopefully it's all sorted out. Um, or at least a lot better, because Ford's about to pull the legs. So we'll see what we go. See how we go. Uh, fifth place, Brad Jones Racing with 300 points. Uh, Andre Hunt, this is, this is Andre and Forward, by the way. Uh, Andre finished ninth and 18th. Whereas uh, Bryce finished seventh and twelfth, and do you know what amazed me about that was the fact that Bryce Fullwood was actually the leading BJR driver out of the four um, to 
out like lead. He's a leading driver out of this weekend, which is amazing given how Andre um, normally is. And I think Andre had a crap weekend, and I'm hoping he has a better one because he he deserves to be a bit higher up than that. I expect more. Um, but I'm really happy for Bryce though to get to get a seventh. Um, is really good. Um, he's had a rough few years in the sport. Um, and those BJR cars aren't the fastest either. And we'll get into that with uh, Macaulay Jones as well. But I expect Andre to be up there a bit higher up next time around. Uh, in sixth place, we've got uh, reigning champs Erebus Motorsport or TFH Higher Racing. Um, with 294 points. Uh, Jack LeBrock finished 13th and 8th, whereas Tide finished 11th and 13th. They had a mixed weekend. Um, their race package wasn't as good. It was either that or the drivers, uh, you know, obviously aren't as good as Brody, which is fair enough. Um, but uh, they they had a good, good qualifying performance. They both made it into the shootout each time. Uh, and it's good to see Todd. He actually, that was his first ever Bathurst shootout too, um, which was cool. I'm really happy for Todd, by the way. I'm really happy for Jack as well, for that matter. Um, but to see Todd P2 on the Friday was just, it was so happy, because I, I am a Todd fan, I admit, um, so I was, I was glad to see him up there for sure. Uh, let's have a look at the questions here. Uh, Sean, they made sure engine pr produced same power, etc. Yeah, they, they really worked hard on trying to Balance it out. Um, Caleb, Chaz was definitely running a slightly different aero setup. Yeah, he definitely was. He definitely was. Um, I think the other four teams could use a bit of homework uh, on that because he he was the fastest Mustang of all weekend. Jimmy, how uh, oh, are you talking about? That? Okay. Uh, thanks for the follow, Nathan. Appreciate it, mate. Uh, we've got a consistent 10 viewers on TikTok, which is cool. I don't know how many... If you're on uh, Twitch at the moment, feel free to say hi. Uh, I'll give you a shout out. I don't know how many people are watching on there. I haven't got that on the screen. Um, but I've got TikTok on the screen though. So everyone joining, welcome. Hope you're having a great... Um, what is it? Wednesday night. Tuesday night even. Um, where are we? Erebus, yeah. So now they're back to mid-pit lane for Melbourne as well. Uh, so they go from the front of the grid to the mid pack, which is is, is what we all expected when Brody left. Um, when when that all all that debacle happened, uh, we did not expect them to win, and I don't expect Todd and Jack to win straight away. Um, yes, they're great drivers, but uh, of it, one, it's a very different package to what they had last year, especially Todd when he had uh, the Blanchard Mustang, and um, yeah. Yeah, I, I hopefully we can see them get some top fives or podiums, but they're not going to win the championship. I can guarantee that for now. Uh, here's a bit of a disappointing one. Seventh place, Tickford, uh, with 279 points, with Cam Waters 22nd, 16, and Thomas Randall 14th and 4th. Uh, they had a very disappointing weekend, unfortunately. To uh, Thomas had a good one um, on Sunday, finishing 4th. Um, but unfortunately that it's not the year they wanted. It's not the way they wanted to start the year. Of course, Cam Waters, uh, he lost a wheel, uh, at turn two, uh, on the Saturday. Um, we almost had a Marcus Ambrose Canberra moment. And unfortunately they've got some work to do, uh, cause Cam was nowhere here. I think qualified 18th, I think on Sunday. So yeah, overall not a good day for the Monster Castro crew. Um, but that being said, I do love their socials at the moment. Their content that they're making is brilliant. Uh, hopefully their race cars are a bit better um, when we hit the streets of Albert Park. Uh... Yeah, I agree, Caleb. De uh, definitely go to the Tickford Facebook, watch the video of the wheel. Yeah, I love what they're doing this year. Um, and I think, what's his name? The one that's replaced... Uh, Tim Edwards, he actually wanted um, to make their social media more out there, and they're doing a really good job with that. I, <laughs> I wasn't expecting that video they made, and I loved every second of it. Um, Jordan, they were having trouble with Water's engine. Oh, well, there you go. That makes sense. That explains it. Hopefully, they can have a better result when they go to Melbourne, because 
we know what they did. We know what potential they've got. They had a fantastic end to last year, and hopefully they can continue that pace when they head to round two. But I'm excited. I'm excited for them still. Uh, next up, eighth place, Premier Higher Racing with 270 points, with Golding in 18th and 5th, and uh, Tim Slade consistently 17th uh, all weekend. Um, now, they had a good weekend and a bad weekend at the same time. Like... Basically, results weren't there. Um, other besides from James Golding getting a fifth in race two, which is great, which is fantastic. But the results don't show their performance. So race one was a bit of a disaster for the team. Uh, James Golding, I think, had a battery issue at the start, so he couldn't get going on his own. Um, once he already, once he got going, he was already he had to start pit lane. So and Tim Slade. Got caught um, with the Ryan Wood incident on lap one. And that, unfortunately, I think he got beached as well. Or he either got really, got a lot of damage um, on that as well. So, unfortunately, disaster weekend for them. But their pace is really good. Their car is looking good. And I'm happy that Ludo is in part of that team. It is making a big difference, for sure. Um, and I'm excited to see what they do. Uh, I think the best decision... That was made was to have Ludo with Golding. Um, they're going to be a great pair if that car, um, if, when that car gets better, they're going to be a very, very good pair for sure. Yeah, I agree, Matt. They looked quick for sure. Um, and I'm excited to see what they do. Plus, they made it into the shootout as well, Golding did. So, and that car looks quite good. I do like the red um, little, little detail. Yes, it's very similar last year, but um, the red is a nice touch for sure. Ninth place, which I'm gutted to say, but quite surprised as well. Uh, Walkinshaw and Dreddy United with 267 points. Uh, we've got Chazzy third and second, and Ryan Wood, unfortunately, did not finish both races. Um, now, Chaz had a fantastic weekend. Uh, that car looks very fast, as we said before. Um, and I reckon we're going to see a three-way battle for the championship at least, guaranteed. Um, if Tickford, hopefully Tickford can, you know, fix their issues for next one. But Chaz looks very good in that Mustang. A lot better than last year, for sure. So I'm very, and good to see the Shuey made a return as well. Um, so double podium for him. Got to be happy with that. Now, Ryan Wood. Um, now, yes, he finished last and didn't finish both races. Uh, NZ, thanks for, Philly, uh, thanks for the follow, mate. Appreciate it. Um, his results does not show what he can do. Um, cause if you don't know, he, all he actually made it into the shootout on Saturday, but unfortunately his lap was under yellow flags or red flag or whatever it was. And unfortunately that lap, that time was deleted. And so he started 14th, which obviously caused that whole conundrum. Um, but he has got a lot of pace in that car. He's a quick bloke. Um, he just got annihilated this weekend, unfortunately, due to being sandwiches and Stuff like that. Nothing was his... I don't think any of it was his fault. Uh, we're talking about um, Ryan Wood, Itchy. Uh, good old Ryan Wood, the rookie sensation from Walkinshaw. Um, but I'm excited to see what uh, um, Ryan Wood can do this year. He's got a bright future. He's only 20 years of age. Um, and if we see the likes of Rock Feeney, who's only 21 or 22, and Matt Payne, only 21, you see what they do at, at such a young age. Uh, for sure, Ryan Wood will definitely get there. Uh, he just had a horrible weekend, unfortunately. Um, did jo oh, did Jones get the yeah, right? Okay. Um, yeah, he. I didn't really see much of McCauley, to be honest. Um, to be personally honest. Um, yeah, exactly, mate. That's a th also another thing. Uh, he missed out on eighty lap, eighty laps worth of racing, eighty laps worth of experience, pretty much. Um, but that's okay. He's got a bright future. We've still got 11 rounds to go. He will get there. He will get there for sure. But I'm glad to see that car looking quick because it definitely is. Yeah, I agree, Matt. Chaz is actually the, the best teammate to have for a young rookie. Um, Chaz is not only is he down to earth, he knows how to drive well and fast. And he also knows, uh, how to deal with the social media side of things and the media. Um, he's got a very, very, very fantastic teammate, Ryan Wood has. Oh, God, Bay, can't disagree with a single thing. You oh, brilliant. That's a, that's a good thing, uh, NC Philly. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, next up is Dick Johnson Racing in 10th uh, with 237 points. Uh, we've got Anton in 21st and 15th with Will in 16th and 10th. They had a bit of a dis- disappointing weekend, unfortunately. I was hoping they would be a bit better. Sunday, they uh, they made it to the shootout, um, but definitely not where they should be. Um, they had a crap year last year, and it looks like they just didn't have a good start to the year. But in saying that, I'm hoping they have a better year um, still. Um, as again, again, it's only just round one, so see how we go. But definitely not the way they wanted to start. Um, I, th- I can't remember. I don't know if there was some car trouble either. I could be making stuff up right now, but I think... They had some trouble as well, and Matt, you're exactly right. I'm about to. I'm literally a good. Good transition. I was about to get into that. I think it's time for Will Davison to go. I reckon um, he's a nice bloke, fantastic bloke, but he hasn't been performing where he should. But in saying that, he was. He did finish ahead of Anton though, for the weekend. So with that being said, but still, so you know what. Will might even be decent enough to stay around, but regardless, I think they need, and they really do need to, uh, put Kai Allen in that seat for 2025 because that kid is booming and they need to do something about it. And, of course, Kai is teaming up with Will for the Enduros this year, um, but he needs to be in that full-time seat in 25. If not, there's something wrong. Otherwise, we're going to have an Oscar Piastri situation on our hands again. He is very quick, Matt. I completely agree. And Sean, it is fantastic to see Ryan's story back. And you can sort of see that, um, sort of see that in their uh, results and stuff. Yeah, the race wasn't great, but at least they got into the shootout. Um, I'm glad to see Ryan's story back in it. He's a great guy. <laughs> 2019 Bathurst PTSD. Don't know what you're talking about. Don't don't know. Don't know what you're talking. About. <laughs> God. Um, let's pretend that didn't happen. Next up is the second half of BJR. Uh, they came home in 11th. Um, 180 points with Macaulay Jones in 19th and 20th and rookie Jackson Evans 20th and 21st. And in saying that, he was actually uh, the leading rookie of the weekend. Now, people are going to say, Richie, start away. But Richie's not a rookie. Um, he's had two years of supercars, so... That doesn't count. Um, So Jackson Evans, this is his first proper year in supercars full-time. He did all right. Uh, He stayed out of trouble, I think. I think there was a couple moments he ran wide. He made a couple mistakes or some. I don't know. I didn't see much of them, to be honest. That's the problem being so far down. You don't see much of them. Um, But he stayed out of trouble, um, which is that's all you can hope for for a rookie in supercars. For the first opening round. Uh, Rookie, and let's be honest, Jones is a good solid. uh, We all get points. Uh, Yeah, I agree. It's just the car, I reckon, was also letting them down. I reckon. Because McCauley Jones has had... He he did really well in Super 2 when he was on it. Um... So I reckon it's just their car, their package is not where it should be. Um, and I reckon he can do better in a different car, but I, don't, I, doubt, I doubt he will leave BJR. Um, but, you know, see how we go. Hopefully BJR just has a better weekend next time. Um, they just had an awful one all together. Uh, Sean, any news on Zach Best? To be honest, no. I have not heard anything. He's not racing in Super 2. I think Max... Uh, I think Vidu, 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 Max Vidu, uh, has now got his number 17 car. Uh, but his sister is racing in Super Utes, though. Um, she did quite well with that. Matt, the BJR pod is great if you don't tune in to that. I, I definitely have to. I have seen it, but I haven't watched it properly, if that makes sense. Like, I actually, I, like, I haven't sat down and watched it yet. And it's very insightful um, with what uh, Brad posts on there. So if it's anything similar to his little videos he does, it's definitely uh, a good one for sure. Yeah, exactly. It's like a stroll situation. If if he leaves the team, he won't have a team to go to. I agree with you. Because um, um, that's the thing. 
it's kind of hard to see um, how he goes because the problem is um, that car isn't very good. Um, so it's kind of hard. To, if he's better, it's kind of hard to see if he is good. If that makes you know what I mean. You know, I'm trying. You know what I'm trying to say. Um, Sean, who do you think champion will be? I lock in Brock Feeney for the year. I reckon uh, he's in. He's a, he's ve he's he's here. He's in a very good spot. Um, for sure. For sure. Um. I definitely reckon Brock Feeney, I reckon. Plus, I'll be happy to see him win as well. He, he's a great kid. And yeah, exactly, Matt. That's the thing. Once again, the four-car team thing doesn't work. And Tickford, there's a reason why they ditched that. Um, it just doesn't work. It doesn't work. Uh, and last but not least, um, Blanchard Racing in 12th. 147 points. Now, unfortunately... They had an eh weekend uh, with uh, James Courtney finishing 15th and 19th and Aaron Love, unfortunately, uh, DNFing on Saturday but finishing 22nd on Saturday on Sunday. Um, he just made a mistake uh, and hit the wall multiple times in the same corner, by the way, um, both days, unfortunately. Uh, so he's got a bit of learning to do, but um, it will hurt him for a while. It probably is... Um, his mentality uh, and his self, I guess, confidence uh, dropped a bit, I reckon, this weekend. But hopefully he bounces back for Melbourne. Um, Bathurst hasn't been too kind to the rookies this weekend, unfortunately. Uh, he's a bright up-and-comer. We've seen what he could do in Super 2, so I'm excited to see what he can do in this car. And hopefully we see Blanchard a bit higher up this year, now that they've got two cars instead of one. Now, James, he had a, he just had a eh, weekend. I didn't see too much of him. But it's good to see Battery World becoming a sponsor. Uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about, um, basically, he hit the um, the Battery World sponsor board heading into turn one and <laughs> he got stuck on his car. Yeah, that's it. He was too busy being a wiggle. He was probably um, still wiggled over, if you, if you call it. Um, so that's probably why he uh, didn't have a great weekend. He's too busy uh, jamming to toot toot chugga chugga. So that, there you go. <laughs> um, and also, apparently, for those who live in Adelaide and going to the motorsport festival like me, uh, he'll be at the event giving Gunter Steiner a hot lap in that car. So that's going to be very cool to see. Um, speaking of that, it's going to be a massive year for uh, um, this festival, and I can't wait. So... Let's have a look at the championship standings after rounds one. Uh, so Will Brown, like I said before, leads the way with 288 points. He's got the uh, orange stickers heading into Melbourne. Uh, and then we've got Brock Feeney and Chaz Mostert. Uh, excited to see what that what they can do this year. Uh, and amazingly, fourth place, we've got young Richie Stanaway. Uh, great start to his return to the main game. Um, then we've got David Reynolds, Nick Perkett. Thomas Randall, uh, hoping probably for a better result and hoping for a teammate up where he is, but that's okay. Uh, Matt Payne in eighth. Bryce Forward in the 10, which is great to see. And James Golding uh, being on in the top five there. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not going to Melbourne Grand Prix. Um, I would love to go to any race, but unfortunately, I can't do that. Um, uh, if anyone wants to go, Matt has a ticket for Thursday if everyone's interested. Uh, unfortunately, I can't, but... Uh, Thanks, anyway. Uh, and then we've got, uh, for the rest of the standings here, we've got Jack LeBrock, uh, Cameron Hill, Todd Hazelwood. So the Erebus guys are just outside the 10 after round one. Uh, Andre Heimgartner, Will Davison, Mark Winterbottom, Tim Slade, James Courtney, Anton Di Pasquale, and Cam Waters in 20th. Definitely not where he wants to be after round one. Then we've got Macaulay Jones, 21st, 22nd, Jackson Evans, Aaron Love, and then Ryan Wood rounds up the 24 grid. So that is it for uh, the thrifty Bathurst 500 for 2024. Round one's done and dusted. Uh, so now we only just got to wait a small month until the Melbourne Grand Prix or the Melbourne Super Sprint, if that's what you want to call it. But So um, for everyone joining the podcast tonight, thank you. Uh, and like I said, I will say goodbye, but this is not the end because we're still after this, we're still playing V8s, so stay tuned for that. 
But uh, thanks for everyone joining on, asking questions for the pod. Uh, for those who wasn't at the live, this, or couldn't watch all the live, um, Guy, thanks for following, bud. Um, this will be uploaded to YouTube Wednesday night at 6pm on Let's Talk Motorsport. So be sure to check that out. Uh, Matt, solid 7 out of 10. Yeah, nice, man. Yeah, I, I personally was expecting a bit better, but I'm hopeful for the next round. But I'm glad you enjoyed it. So I got reflux. Um, but, uh, yeah, so everyone joining the pod, thank you for that. Um, it's a shame Alex couldn't be here. Hopefully we can see him next time. Um, and stay tuned for our, uh, Melbourne Grand Prix, or sorry, Melbourne, um, review, uh, preview, sorry, uh, which will be coming out probably a week prior of the, or the week of the event. Uh, in terms of Formula One, we've got our Bahrain Grand Prix podcast coming next week. Um, of course, Grand Prix's starting this weekend. Uh, so that's going to be good to see. Probably see another Max Verstappen dominance. See how we go. But uh, stay tuned for that. And uh, yeah, be sure to catch out all our socials on the screen here. Where is it here? As well as uh, join our streams when we stream. We stream Monday to Thursdays on TikTok and Twitch from 7.30. And you can see these legends here. Um, you see the people who have sent gifts tonight. Um that, that ball just chockers you last night, which is incredible. Uh, and also shout out to the subscribers here. Um, so if you want to be like these guys here, then uh, be sure to be part of the live stream and send gifts and subscribe and stuff to get your name slapped onto that board. Or even if you want to be like these legends here and ask questions, you'll be featured in the pod as well. So uh, that's all from me. Bye for... Uh, thank, uh, yeah, let's start out again. Jesus, I butchered that. Um, that's all from me. Uh, see you for the Melbourne Super Sprint. Bye for now.